Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 13, and today just one verse 16, although we'll sort of back up to verse 9 as well. Here's what verse 16 says. So it shall serve as a sign on your hand and as phylacteries on your forehead, for with a powerful hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. Now, right now, somebody's asking, uh, what is phylacteries? So phylacteries, and they're also called teflon, they're small black boxes, little boxes of scripture, and you can find pictures of this wherever you want. Maybe I'll slap some on here. Uh, pictures uh, where there's a small black box, there's certain scriptures that are exactly reproduced, written down in it, and you wear the little box on your head or on the backside of your left arm. Um, why? Because we read the verse, here, let me read it again. So it shall serve as a sign on your hand and as phylacteries on your forehead, for with a powerful hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. So the practice of uh, some believers in modern Judaism and in Christ's day as well, the practice was it's for certain prayers of the day that uh, the Pharisees and different people would put on the box on their forehead with the scriptures in it and the box back here. Why on the left arm instead of the right? Because the heart is closer on the left side of the body, and so the left arm is, is put a little box there and you'll be the closest to the heart. Now, here's a question. Do you think that's what this verse is teaching? Do you think that what Moses wants is for these people to uh, make little boxes and write little scriptures in them and, and hang them on their head for certain prayers? Do you think that's what this is, 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 is that what this is saying to us? Because that's certainly a practice that some have been doing. Yeah, hold on just a second here. So it's true, Deuteronomy 6.6 6 and some of these other verses we've just looked at talk about, you know, make it make it like a reminder in your forehead and, and near your heart. It's true there are scriptures that talk like that. But you know, when you read these scriptures through in their context, you may reach a different, a little bit different conclusion than that you have to go out and make yourself some phylacteries. What does the Bible say? God desires truth in the, yes, in the inward parts, in the inward parts. Hanging it on boxes, you know, on the outside of the body and then uh, walking around like you're some kind of a super pious person, is that what we're really looking at here? Uh, to me, that sort of demonstrates that someone's missed the boat pretty bad. So these passages, just be, the, in the verses just before these passages we've read about, and I'm talking here Exodus 13 verse verse 9 and verse 16, the verses just before those verses in both those cases, what? They talk about retelling the story, retelling the story of the Passover and the departure from Egypt, retelling that story back and forth to your firstborn son and telling him why you do this and why you do that. Uh, that's what it talks about. Then it says, let these be like a sign on your forehead and on your arm. Uh, in other words, it's not saying to hang a box on your head. It's saying to remember these things and let the re recounting, the restatement of these stories, let these things fill us with uh, good memories and connections to those things. Do you know what happens when you put something on the outside like that? It tends to become a ritual. You put the box on your head and, and now, you, uh, now you think you've done something. You know, I fulfilled the, the, some right here. And uh, there are things that are traditional that we should do, but some of these things like this, um, we don't really see a record of Jesus doing this stuff, do you? Do you think Jesus put a box, a little box on his forehead? I'll tell you what Jesus did. It's quite obvious when you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus had been memorizing the scriptures, and Jesus didn't have them in a box on his head. He had them in his head. Jesus didn't have them in a box by his heart. Jesus had them in his heart. You and I, should we have them in a box by our heart or a box on our head, or should we have them in our head and in our heart? God desires truth in the inward parts. So putting his word in, soaking in the word. I know we live in an age when it's like, um, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna, do, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you, you know, just a couple minutes of your time and you, you preacher or you presenter, you, you tell me the way it is and I'll just accept that. I know we're in an age of minimal mental um, circuit activation. We're just kind of like little baby birds just swallowing up stuff. I know that's kind of our age, but you know what? God's plan is for us to, to get into the word. He says, eat the word. Uh, it is written. That's the answer to the question every time. It is written. How do we know what's written? Because we've read what's written, okay? So God's plan for us 
is that our, with the scripture weapons, the promises of God for us, they're in the Bible, they're there in God's word. These things need to be in our hearts, in our minds, so not in boxes. These things need to be literal and real, and we need to soak our brain in it. We need to learn this and, and be, let this soak in and be part of our identity, because otherwise we'll just soak up all the other nonsense all around us. So I think as we look at this verse, it, it's an interesting uh, verse 16 and verse 9, they're interesting business for us, especially as we look overhead down to the book of Revelation, because in Revelation chapter 13, what do you have? You have a uh, beast power that demands that in your forehead and in your in your hand, you know, that you have some, some mark of identity. And so how do you and I remember? Well, God's trying to put in the story of the, the Passover and, and the departure from Egypt, he's trying to put that into our heart and mind so that that's part of our identity. The beast power in Revelation 13 and in Daniel 7 and so on, he wants to have our worship. And so he wants to have our identity. When you give your identity to someone, you are worshiping that person. So the whole purpose here is to recall God's mighty deeds, put them in our memory. And by the way, if you want to know what Jesus said about 23 of Matthew in verse 5, they tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with even so much as a finger. But they do all their deeds to be noticed by men, for they broaden their phylacteries and lengthen the tassels of their garments. They love the place of honor and banquets and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the street. And basically there's people who are putting the, the boxes out and the long tassels and all this business. They want to look pious. They want to kind of blast as they enter the place of worship. They want to kind of blast out their, their uh, righteous exterior picture. But Jesus said, you know, inside they were like whited sepulchers. Inside they were full of dead men's bones. You and I on the inside, we want to be full of the truth and the love of the Lord Jesus. So interesting looking at this verse 16. I don't believe it was ever God's design that we would hang little boxes with scriptures on our, on our body somewhere or maybe tattoo them on, no, uh, but he wants it in our hearts and minds. And we'll be the beneficiaries of that. It'll be a good thing. God is beautiful. He wants us to remember in the, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, he wants us to remember the Passover story, fundamental baseline, part of our experience, who we are as believers in the Lord Jesus in these last days. All right, may you be blessed. We look forward to seeing you join us tomorrow morning as we carry right on in the book of Exodus.